Good evening everybody. My name is Margie Mark and I'm an educational consultant for Macmillan Education. Hi everyone. My name is Susana Martin and I am digital consultant at Macmillan Education. We'd like to welcome you to this practical webinar, uh, Getting the Most Out of Navio, in which we will focus on how to get started with our Macmillan's digital platform for our pre-primary course, Big Wheel. Later on this evening, at 6.30, you will be, those teachers who are um, teaching primary courses will be able to watch a webinar specifically for primary teachers. That's correct. Using the same link as they have this afternoon. Yes. Well. Okay. So, uh, to begin, um, we would like to focus this webinar on uh, some of the key features of Navio, and that is how to register for Navio and how to set up an account as mm -hmm. a teacher how to create classes and register pupils, how to manage a class. We're also going to introduce you to Tap and Teach, uh, the Pupils app, and how to use the reward system inside Navio. Mm -hmm. Finally, we will show you where to find help in the future. Before we begin, we'd like to see what your current experience of using digital materials is. On the screen, you can see a question. Are you a new user or existing user of digital courses? There are a series of statements A, B and C. I'd like you to choose the statement which best reflects your teaching circumstances and experience with digital courses. Let me remind you of the options. A. I am a new user of Navio and I've never used digital materials. B. I am a new user of Navio but I have used digital materials of other publishers. And C, I'm a new user of Navio and have used Macmillan digital materials and so I have an account. Now, um, let's see what they are answering. Okay, let's see the results. There are any results. Oh yes. New user. Yeah. Okay, so we already have 16 users. Um, the majority of them are existing users, and they already have an account. 65%. Exactly. 65 percent. Yes. Right. Uh, New user of Navio, but I have never used digital materials, and I have used ma digital materials for the publisher are almost the same percentage. Okay, but the, the majority of our users today uh, have already used Navio and have a Macmillan account. Okay. Okay, so Good that's al know. almost 70%. Mm -hmm. That's a key question because that will determine uh, how we proceed in the registration process, yeah. which Susanna is going to explain now. Yes, that's now. correct, Maggie, because there is a slightly difference uh, depending on if you are an existing user or if you are a new user. So. Let's quickly remind uh, how to um, make the registration process and start with uh, Navio. Mm -hmm. So um, to simplify things, because uh, we know that at the beginning of the course, the registration process might be a nightmare for everyone. So in order to simplify things, we created a few years ago uh, the website macmillaneducationeverywhere.com, which can be used for both new users and existing users to access their digital content. So let's see how this portal works. Um, if you can see my screen, I'm in the uh, home page, and you can see there are two sections here. One is for register, and one is for the login. So those of you who already have a Macmillan account, uh, because you were teaching other materials of uh, Macmillan materials last year, you don't need to create a new account. There's no need for you to register again. You can use your current username and password and log in using your credentials. And some do it right now. Okay, let's do it this together. And of course, if you don't remember your username and password, you can always uh, recover them by using these links, uh, the forgot username and forgot password use, uh, links, and uh, you will receive steps to recover or to reset your password. Let's log in and see how existing users uh, can add new content to their account. As you can see here in the main page, I already have content uh, against my account. And if this is your case, uh, you can always add new content by using this button here in the Add New Content section. You can activate a code by clicking here. So I already have access to Big Wheel Level 1, 
but let's activate our code to access BigWheel level 2, okay? So I'm just putting here the code. GST. While, while Susanna's typing that in, maybe we'd <laughs> it's a good experience to learn from this experience and remember to copy and paste the code in, if possible, from the yes. email which they send yes, us. Yes, because if they receive the account, the, the access code via email, it is always easier to copy and paste yeah. rather than to type in. But well, I have already put in here, I have clicked on check, account, uh, check content, and it is saying that uh, this code is valid for Big Wheel to Teachers app, which is what I want to activate. And I just click on activate, and that's it. So the process for uh, current users, uh, it's very easy and very straightforward. Once you activate your code, uh, in the home page of the macminaneducationeverywhere.com portal, you will see your new content, content. just uh, ready for you to, to start, okay? Great. But, so, um, well, I'm going to demonstrate now, just accessing Big Wheel, and now you can see that I also have access to the Big Wheel level 2. But since we also have some uh, users that are completely new to Macmillan products, I'm going to log out and explain how to create an account, okay? So in case that you are a completely new user, you have already received your code, but you first need to create an account, okay? So we click here in register, and the first thing that the system will ask you is to, again, type your code that you have received uh, via email. I'm going to type in, but better for you if you can copy and paste to avoid mistakes. Okay, so one. Yeah, the code's quite Let's long, it's 20 digits. Yes, it's it? better always copy and paste. Mm -hmm check code and his, uh, the system is telling me that this code is valid for a wheel one teacher sub, which is what I want to redeem. So let's activate the code. Here again I have the choice to um, say if I am a first time user or if I am a returning user and I already have a Macmillan account. But as we were saying, we are going to explain how to create an account from the very beginning. So we click here on create account and we just need to put our name, personal data in this form and click on next. In this step two, we just need to use a username and a password. So I'm going to... So this is the stage where you would choose a username that's memorable, that's easy to use. Yes, exactly. That's great, yeah. <coughs> and also make a note of it. Yeah, it's mm. better always. Although you can always recover it by clicking on the forgotten password links. It is always a good idea to uh, save them in a Word document or whatever you want to use. Down, yeah. So let's see if this username that I have just used is not used. Create account. Yes, I'm just confirming my email. And that's it. We have just created an account and we have added our access code for Big Wheel Level 1 to this new account, okay? okay. So, so just to yeah. recap then, if you're a current user, you can use your existing exactly. uh, credentials, your login and password to mm -hmm. add more content to your your existing account. Exactly. And if you're a new user, you will create a new account by registering SOS. and setting it up. That's Great. it. Okay, yeah. so now we are all attendees in this webinar, both uh, new and existing users, we are all on the same page. So we have already redeemed our token mm -hmm. and we have our Big Wheel content available here. So what is next? Next thing will be to download the Navio app. Yes. Right? So we click on Big Wheel to access our digital content. And we can see here a couple of uh, menus. So this per one it says Navio. I can see here a link uh, to the Navio Learning Management website, mm -hmm. which I, I will explain later, and a link to access the Magic Phonics site for Big Wheel to practice phonics, and a uh, very yeah. useful tool for pre-primary. And I, just a reminder that I can log in in this website, I can log in with the same credentials that I have for Big Wheel, so it is very easy to access. Oh, well, that's handy. Mm. And if I open this Big Wheel Level 1 standard menu, I can see here 
uh, the resources that I have available as a teacher in the resource bank. Mm -hmm. And also I can see the, uh, the button to download the Navio app. Right. Okay. So if we click here, it will take us to the Navio download site. Here, we just need to choose the operative system, operating system that we have in our devices and click on it to download the app. You have Windows, Mac and Linux available. Right. If uh, you are a user, if you are using a tablet, an iPad or an Android device, you can directly go to the App Store or to the Google Play Store to just search for Navio and download the app directly from there. So it is quite easy. Okay, so we have created an account, mm -hmm. we have added our digital content, yes. and we have downloaded the Navio app, right? right yeah. Okay, so now let's go and open the Navio app to see how to use it, and how to add classes, and students, and all this. Okay, so this is the um, uh, Navio app, first screen. Uh, most of you are already familiar with it. Uh, with it. Uh, we just need to log in as a teacher using our credentials. So they're the credentials if you're a new user that you've just created. Exactly. Yeah. Or the ones that you were using last year for yeah. another course. Okay, so when you first um, log in in Navio, as you can see, if you are an existing user, you might have classes created for previous years, as mm -hmm. is my case. Yeah. But if you are a new user and you have just um, added your access code in Macmillan Education Everywhere, you will see this um, screen empty. Do not worry, I it is not a mistake, it is not an issue. It just means that you need to create a class. Okay, so we click here in Add a Class. And we go to the learning management website that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. okay. So at this, at this point, before continue, I think it's worth mentioning that Navio works in two different environments. Okay, so one is the app here, in where I can access the digital content and the tap and teach and the pupils app and so on. Mm -hmm. And the other environment is this learning management website. And here I can create classes and other students or remove students and or do all the administrative tasks related to my classes. Okay. okay, so if I understand correctly then, the app is, the teacher's app is all the course materials for teaching, Correct. the pupil's app is all the materials for learning, and uh, the uh, learning management system is um, all the administration, the managing classes, exactly. adding students, great. That's okay, it. It's clear. That's it. So when we have clicked on add a class, and what we just need to do here is to uh, put a class name, like for example, big. And that's handy because often you two. have more than one class at the same level. That's correct, yeah. yeah. And we select the course that we want to add to this class. Right. Okay, this is here because we have already um, add this content when we to our use account. The code. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. it's the previous step that we have just done. Yeah. Okay, so I select here big wheel two, click on next and the class will be created, okay? It is quite easy, quite straightforward. I can understand that sometimes at the beginning uh, it is a bit difficult to understand the changes and the what, why we have two environments, mm -hmm. but once you get accustomed to it, it is quite easy. And you can always save, Margie, this uh, learning management website, you can save it into your favoritos. That's good. And you can access every time you need. Yeah, that's it's quite that's easy. useful. I do that, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right, so what will be the next step? Uh, so once you have created a class, uh, Navio on the learning management website is asking you to add students. Mm -hmm. So as we're now focusing on pre-primary, I think these two options here, get students to add themselves and copy students from an existing class are more suitable for primary. So I'm going to focus in these two options. Also because uh, pupils in pre-primary are too young to be really part of the registration process. That's right, it's either parents or teachers. Exactly. And if teachers do it, they have more control on That's what it. the pupils are doing, which is useful. Yeah, you will see yeah. the advantage of uh, registering your pupils yourself. I'm going to explain these two options. So, okay. But before you start, um, we are well aware that, for example, for pre-primary pupils, some schools may opt not to that's register true. their pupils. Yes, yeah. that's true. That's because of the age factor. Um, and some pupils, some teachers would register the pupils maybe at 
uh, at level two for big yes. level two. Mm -hmm. um, this is really up to you to decide. Um, yeah. But we're for the purposes of this session, we're going to show you what's in Navio. So exactly. you, you can choose for yourselves, and you can benefit from the elements of gamification which are existing inside the Pupils app. That's okay. correct. So okay. if you don't want to add your student at this point, you just click on cancel and that's it. You can start using Navio at home or in the classroom as, uh, as usual. Okay? Yeah. okay, I'm going to explain then how to add the students uh, first um, with this option, uh, adding my students manually. So if I click here, you're going to see how you are able to add your students one by one mm -hmm. right? by writing their names, um, their um, surname, and their email account. And a very common uh, doubt is which email account should I use. You can use, um, if your school, ha the pupils have an email account, that's perfect because you can put it in here. Yeah. You can also use the teacher's email or the parents', um, the parents email. Okay, any yeah. of these options is perfectly fine. So we add here the name of the student. Whoops, sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> and we just click on this icon, plus icon, to add it here. And I would continue doing this as uh, until having all my students being part of this class. Once yes. I'm ready, just click on next. So if you've got 25 students, you have to have 25 inputs there. Yeah? Uh, yes, inputs. I know. It takes some time. I know it yeah. is a very uh, manual process, yeah. and that's why I'm going to explain you now how to do it quicker. But I have to say this is a very good option if you have a student coming in the middle of the course, yes. and then you can just add it. I imagine you already have a 20 pupils class, and someone new is coming in the middle of the 10, and then you use this option to ask to add this new student. That's great. That's okay. Yeah. I, I can understand yeah. this is uh, too manual to be done for all the students, for all your classes. It's still a necessary um, tool yes. that we need. Yeah, to it might be very yeah. useful. Mm. But I'm going to explain to you how to use a quicker way to add your students, okay? Great. Uh, we can also have this um, option using a CSV file. Okay, um, I don't know, many of you might not know uh, what is a CSV file. It is just a way to save an Excel document. So let's click on it and we can see it. Okay, so here you can see the format that we need to upload here. You just need to create an Excel document with three columns. In the first column, we will put the pupil's f uh, first name, second column for the pupil's last name or surname, and the third column for the contact email. So okay. there's no headers? No, the no, top. there's no need to put any header, just this information. Right. And then instead of saving this as an Excel document, mm -hmm. as XLS document, we will save it as CSV. Oh, is that little That's arrow it. at the bottom where you Correct. select the format? You can select the format, and instead of uh, selecting the Excel format, mm -hmm. you will select the CSV. Right. That's it, okay? So, okay, I already have an Excel document prepared in this format. So I can drag, drag and drop here, or I can browse my computer and select it. Okay, so I open it, it uploads to the system, and then in this, on, in, in this last screen, I can check if everything is correct. Because if something is wrong, I can directly change it in here. There's no need to re-upload the CSV document. So, oh, that's handy. for example, if this student, for example, this name is uh, there is an incorrect spelling, so I correct it directly here. Yeah. And once I'm happy with this list of students, I agree to the terms, and I add them to my class. And now the system is just adding students into Big Wheel too. And you can follow it on the progress bar, which is useful. Yes, as well. it will might take a while if mm -hmm. we have a lot of students. But as you can see, this is a, a better way to do this instead of manually typing uh, 20 students, for example, one by one. Yeah. Great. So this is very quick. Mm -hmm. And I also want to mention, for example, um, even I, I consider it is quite easy to just save the document in the Excel into a CSV document. But there are also websites that we can use to I'll transform one Excel document into a CSV document. So there are yeah. different ways to do this. Convert them over. Mm -hmm. that's yes, good. Yeah. that's it. We already have our students. Here I have my class, Big Wheel 2, that I have just created. Right? If I click on it, let's see what we can do in, the, in this management system. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because as we have said, 
uh, students are too young maybe to be part of this process. So now that we have created a class and we have added our students, it's time to create their own credentials. So we are going to create right. the username and the password for them. For the students. Yes, yeah. and that, that way we will avoid uh, parents to be also registering and having doubts and questions and issues maybe. So we will ensure that from day one, all our students will be included in the class and they all will have the username and password ready. That's great. That's very, yes. that's very, very useful. And of course you'll save all those details as exactly. well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's taking a little bit at the beginning, but once you have them in, in their class, you will see the list of students. Mm -hmm. And it is very useful because it not only allows us to uh, create uh, the username and password, but to edit the, the details. Oh, that's so handy. Yes. Yeah, because you can always th change, you know. They might change yeah, here name. we are. Mm -hmm. Now I have the list of uh, students that I have just uploaded. And how can we create their username and password? Okay. Mm. So we do that by using this Get Student Logins button. I click here. It explains me what I'm just about to do. You confirm. Click confirm. Yeah, confirm. Mm -hmm. And it will. You will see it in a moment. It will create um, a page, like a PDF format page, mm -hmm. that with all my students, uh, their username and password. And once it, it is ready, you can print it. You see? Yeah. You have this PDF. You have uh, the username and the password for each student. You can print this out and share about uh, among your students or your pupils or with their parents. Maybe if they want to record or track the, um, the, user, the user credentials. It's handy though because you can cut along the dotted line, give yes. out the strip of paper, they can fold it and stick it onto the agenda, onto the diary. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's very handy. That's really, yeah. Yeah, that's really useful to have. I would also save a copy for myself, definitely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So now we have all students and they all have uh, the username and password. So uh, from this moment, mm -hmm. my students can now uh, log in in Navio and start using the pupils app, mm -hmm. which is really, really nice. Now, what else can we do here? As we were saying, we can edit the student details. For example, if I need to uh, change the name or I made a mistake and this alumno is, uh, this pupil is not Rodriguez, is Martin, then I can change the name just click on save to save the changes okay and that's it I have already updated my user what if you have made a mistake and this student shouldn't be here in this class which could happen then we can just remove the student by clicking on this uh, being icon great vale? it's quite mm -hmm. easy and what well, correct me if I'm wrong but it might be very likely that your pupils will forget if they if you don't put your their credentials in the agenda or something like that it is quite likely that they are going to forget their password yeah right yeah and this the parents need to keep it safe as well yes mm -hmm. so in if that happens mm -hmm. uh, Navio allows us to reset the password so if you have one pupil that cannot access the pupils app at that moment you don't need to um, s contact our customer care department or try to f uh, recover their password. You just need to access here to this uh, learning management uh, website. Uh, it's good because you've got more control over it. You Correct. can do it faster. That's it's, it. It's really you just yeah. uh, look for your student, the one that has problems to access, mm -hmm. and you can click in by clicking in this new password button. You can just create a new automatic password only for him. If I click here, mm -hmm. you will see that it creates the same format that you can print out again, but it only contains the username and password for this specific student. Ah, oh, that's great. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But what if you want to put up, instead of an automatic password, you want to choose a password for this student? Because remember, this, uh, this pupil might have been forgetting his password like three times per week yeah. which it is a nightmare for you to be printing this out and generating new automatic passwords so let's make things easier for Alejandro okay so if we access the Alejandro's profile here the same way that we have added or edited his last name earlier we can also edit his password Oh, so so yeah. instead of having um, a password uh, which is a mix of letters and, and numbers, we can just uh, put, for example, his name and surname. And in this case, I think we will be safer and 
we will ensure that he will not forget his password anymore. That's okay? really good because you can give the, all the class the same password. Uh, that's another option. Yeah. Yes, if, if you, you want, want to, to, if you are using different uh, digital platforms in your uh, class to mm. access different content, mm. and maybe you want your pupils to use the same password, which is going to be easier for them, then you can edit manually all the passwords from your students so that they can use the same. Okay? Great. We save the changes, and yes, and that's it. So one thing that I want you to know is that now that we have modified this student password, we shouldn't click again in the Get the Student Logins button, because if you remember, this generates uh, automatic username and passwords for everyone. Ah. So if we have already modified Alejandro's password and we create new student logins, that means that the password that we have just put for Alejandro, which mm. was Alejandro Martin, mm. will not longer be valid because we have just generated a new password by clicking on the Get the Student Logins. So each time we click on this button, Get Student Logins, we yes. generate another uh, new exactly. list. Exactly. Okay. So this is something to use at the beginning of the class when you have set up your, your class and maybe you don't need to reset the password or to change the password of your students during the whole course. But if you do that, I recommend you to just um, write down your usernames and passwords in a Word document, for example, that you can update every time you modify one password. It's just yeah. to, be, to be sure of what you are doing. Just that's it. So we have seen, we have seen how to create an account we have added uh, new content to our account. Mm -hmm. We have downloaded Navio. Yeah. We have created a class. We have added our students. And we have created uh, username and passwords for all of them. And edited the details. Yeah, yeah, we have done all of this. That's great. OK, so we've demonstrated the four ways to. Um, the two ways. Two ways. Two sorry. ways, yeah. Maybe because there are four, <laughs> but <laughs> for the primary is just it's two. The two which are relevant. Uh, yes. OK, correct. So we've demonstrated two ways. Uh, to register pupils on Navio, if you should wish to do so. Um, poll, quick poll about what you think, how you would feel you would want to register your pupils, if at all. On the screen, you can see a question, which is, which form of pupil registration is the most suitable for your teaching situation? The options are manual, where you would introduce the student, the pupils' details uh, individually, manually yourself. Uh, the second one was uh, using bulk upload, that is using the Excel document, which mm. has been formatted in CVS format. Yeah. Or um, maybe you don't think you want to register your pupils yet, and you prefer to use the app in the classroom. Yes. That's mm -hmm. an option too. So uh, I'd just like to see uh, which, which format is the most suitable for you. Let me just see what the poll says. And people are answering. We have so far 44% manual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 45. Bulk upload. I don't think I'll register my pupils yet. Okay. Yeah, majority prefers to register manually their students. Yeah. Which is perfectly fine. Absolutely. It's perfectly fine. We just. Uh, explain the CSV document as it was a quicker way to do it and you might also have that Excel document with a list of your pupils um, names and contact details for other purposes so you can reuse it or yeah. you can uh, you can reuse it for other of course other the advantage purposes. of registering your pupils is that everything they do in the pupils app you can monitor if necessary yes. and they, they have their individual scores when yes. they do the activities but look now, now the, yeah. the ones that think that they will not register their pupils yet is increasing and yes. it's almost the same as the manual, as manual registration. which is also a very good option. I mean, you can use uh, both pupils and teachers can use Navio, the tap and teach and the pupils app without the need to create a class or to other students. Just they just use the pupils app to make the activities and to listen to the songs and videos. Yeah, it has that flexibility. Yes. Okay. So uh, let's move on then. So uh, we are moving to the next section uh, where um, I'd like to introduce Tap and Teach. Uh, many of you are uh, new users and so you've never seen Tap and Teach before. If you are in this situation, 
Then we had a webinar in April, it was yes. uh, April the 10th, um, and which is um, stored in advantage. I would strongly recommend that you view that webinar mm -hmm. because we go into a, a lot more detail there about some of the features of Tap and Teach, yes. which we don't have time for today, unfortunately. But we will show you some features of Tap and Teach to get you started. Okay, okay. So, so let's go back to Navion. Yes, yep. uh, and register in Tap and Teach. Okay, so I'm now in the class menu. I'm going to access the Big Wheel class. That's right. And I'm going to go to the Tap and Teach, okay? Okay. Uh, you can see Tap and Teach is uh, the place where we keep all the teaching resources all in one place and a lot more as well. Uh, but you can see on the opening screen, you have uh, a download screen mm -hmm. and you have the flexibility to download all the course materials in one go or to download unit by unit. Mm -hmm. uh, downloading unit by unit gives you um, the, the advantage, basically, of not clogging up your memory on yeah. your computer. So you or can or yeah, or saving this as this as space in the devices, for example. Absolutely. Mm. And also it takes less to time to download. So Correct. if mm -hmm. you're going to download unit by unit, you, you've got some time before class to do that. But if you're downloading the whole course, well, you might need to do that the, the night before. Yeah. Just, just to be super, super uh, clear super that prepared. it's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, one feature in this screen and in previous screens is the uh, full screen button yes. at the top right hand okay. corner. And if Susanna clicks on that, you'll see that the screen size changes. It becomes uh, bigger and smaller than uh, each time you click on it. it flips back and forth and we've created that button for you because we found that teachers uh, still like to have access to all their other applications yeah. on the computer so if they want to do a quick search on Google or if they want to open a word presentation exactly. etc. This is a, this is a way to have uh, Navio open but you can also access your other apps or to access your documents or whatever you want to open. Very easily, mm. yeah, that's great. And then, of course, when you go back to Tap and Teach and you want the children to be able to see the full screen, you go back to the full screen format. Mm -hmm. So once you've downloaded your content and you go into the lesson that you want... Yes, I'm just opening a lesson. Yeah. Uh, you will see that uh, when you enter Tap and Teach, you'll notice that Navio is, um, looks very different. Yeah. And that's because it, it in fact is a learning pathway with different tools and resources all integrated in one place, mm -hmm. um, making it easier for you to be able to locate those resources and use them adaptively um, to be able to personalize the learning experience of your right. pupils. Yeah. Um, what it means is that you um, have different ways of navigating. Okay. So how can I access the other activities? For, for example, I can see here this activity, yeah. but I guess there are more. Yes, there are a lot more, of course. And if you click on the carousel, the this yellow icon? Yes, at the bottom right. there, you will see right. that all the activities for this particular lesson come up. And you can scroll along the carousel, look at the thumbnails, uh, thumbnails with the small images of the activities. Yeah, so the, it is very easy to locate and to identify the activity that I want to open. Absolutely, and they're mm -hmm. labelled quite clearly as well, which is a new feature in Navio. And we've made that uh, yeah. based on your feedback, basically, so that you know at each stage what activity you're looking at and where it comes from, whether it's a presentation activity, whether it's from the pupils app, whether it's from the pupils book. And how can I know if the activity uh, came from the pupils book or if it is from the, the pupils app? Well, you can see there are icons on the thumbnails and it's AB right. or PB. Okay, yes. so these icons are telling me that this activity, for example, came from the pupils book. That's right. And uh, this one, for example, is in the pupils book, but also in the pupils app. Correct, that's right. right. Okay, Alternatively, you could click on the arrow buttons at the bottom, and they would help you navigate forward and backwards in the carousel. Right. Okay. Okay. So that's one way of navigating and finding the activities that you want. And you can see that it's a learning pathway. And each of the activities are marked out quite clearly, and they are progressively developed to enhance the learning experience mm -hmm. of your pupils. But an alternative way is to click on the filter activities tool okay. at the top. 
And you can see here, again, you have a, an overall picture of you of all the activities that you can see in that particular lesson. Mm -hmm. And if you click on the, the buttons at the top, you'll be able to view the activities inside the pupils book, inside the pupils app, and right. there are extras as well. Yeah. Uh, so you can click on them. Yeah. And so you can, from there, you just, if you select an activity, you see an activity you want to use that your pupils would benefit from, you just click on that activity and, and go and complete the activity, mm -hmm. yes. That's right. Um, another feature of Tap and Teach, which is important to point out now, is the view page option. I was going to ask for it because I am just missing the page of the book. Yeah, sometimes it's useful to have that page of the view of the yeah. of the pupils book to orient uh, pupils so that they know where they should be looking, where they should be focusing mm -hmm. when they're looking at their pupils book. And let's not forget, they're very, very small. They're going to get lost. Yes. You need to give them clear guidance on this. So if you click on the pupils book page there, the page for this particular lesson Here pops up. And there we can zoom in on different, this is a story, we can zoom in on the story frames as we are listening to the story one by one. Right. Or we can highlight that particular story frame by using the masking tool. Yeah, oh, I move see. that across. Oh. Or, we, yeah, or we can use a highlighting pen, uh, keep the whole page visible and use a highlighting pen for them to be able to focus on the particular frame that you want them mm -hmm. to look at if you're talking about that. That's really useful. Okay, yep. so you can do that and of course it's compatible with the interactive whiteboards as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. So they are the key features inside the... Uh, what is this icon here for Would the you? rewards? Ah, okay, yes, very good. We need to give some rewards as well and that's a feature which is really valuable inside. Uh. You can, if you click on the rosette, you can see that you go to the reward section of Tap and Teach. And the first view of the reward section would be the students attending your lesson. And if a, a student is absent, you would just take off the green tick so right. that they are no longer feature in that um, lesson. Right. And then mm -hmm. if you click on lesson rewards at the top, Yes. You can see that the students who you've taken the tip away no longer no appear. Longer. Okay. So we're left with our remaining pupils in the classroom. Mm -hmm. There is a facility to group your students. So if you're doing some kind of group work or work in chocos, as we call it where I am, workstations, uh, then you can group your students into different workstations mm -hmm. this way. But if you wanted to give uh, points to your students, let's imagine team one, have uh, worked very well on task when they've been working together as a group. The, yeah. the, there's been no fights in the classroom. <laughs> yeah. and they've been working really well and they've been focusing. We want to give them, we want to award their good behavior. So we would just select the team as you have done, Susanna, yes. and click okay. on the plus button. To um, add points. To, to add them. points, yes. Is Irati in that team? No, it's not. No, well, Irati has been working very well and we want to give her okay. lots of points so as well. So can I select one of the students, if the, even if she's not part of this team? That's right. Yes. You can unselect the team first. Uh, right. Unselect. And then, and then select Irati and give her lots of points. Great. On a rare occasion, you may wish to remove points too as well, but that option's that. there for oh, you I'm to not use. going to do that today. No, we're okay. positive behaviour management today. And can I now log in into the pupil sub and see how she has received the points? Yes, that'd be great. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. So we go back uh, out of Tap and Teach and, and into the pupil sub. Into the pupil sub. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to... Using Irati's uh, login details, which is her username and her password. I think I did it correct. Let's check. Mm -hmm. I think they just really like to receive points and go home and see, look daddy. And oh, receive. absolutely. And if they do this at home, they will see. I can see here the points that you have just gave me, the 20 points Only that I 20? just <laughs> Well, but I already have a lot of them. Okay, here. good. Okay, so we can click on there. And we saw that there was uh, feedback from the points were given by our guide. Yes, it was Dylan, Dylan right? Dylan, yes. And there are two hmm. guides in the pupils app of Navio for Big Wheel. Um, they are the course characters for Big Wheel, Mimi and her brother Dylan. Yes. That's nice. Do you mind if I go to the settings menu and just Certainly modify the do. volume? Yes, and it's good 
It's good to show this. Both teachers and pupils can change the volume of the music, can change the settings, and the configuration of the screen to right. make it larger mm -hmm. or smaller exactly. uh, in settings. Okay. Okay. I'm now going back to this unit where we were, right. and you okay. can keep on your explanations. Okay. So um, Irati, as she ca um, uh, carries on, continues her journey inside the pupils app. She would follow the pathway. Right. And she would land on one of the opticons, and when she jumps on it, uh, the activity for that corresponding lesson opens up. And right. we can see, I've already completed this activity. Yeah, but, but I can also use this map yes, to navigate. you can use the map, and that gives right. Irati an overall view. And we can see instantly that she's seen the activities, she's done the activities. Yeah. Let's just okay, view just one of the activities. And open this one. Yeah. And this is a vocabulary game, three where Irati would um, identify... Ah, oh, glue. Glue. Okay. Yeah, glue. So some balloons will come up now, and she'll have to tap on the balloons, which have the image of glue inside. So she's, it's an identifi identification task. I have one here. Go on, click on it. They move uh, very slow so that, so that they can have time to identify and... Absolutely. Because if they go very fast, uh, they will get lost, right? That's right. It does mm. speed up slightly as Irati improves in proficiency, right? Uh, which is really good as well. But as a tool in the classroom, it's good because it goes slow. Because sometimes you'd like want to ask one student, one pupil to do it, and then That's she'd it. go back, sit down, and somebody else would come so up. So we to have time to play with different students That's with the right. same activity. That's, That's good. Right. I have so another one. Now we've seen okay. that. Let's yeah. let's have a look at how Irati can spend her hard-earned like points. Oh, no. Okay. That she yeah, I have the feedback from Dylan, Dylan. again. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, so we go back. Okay. And if Irati clicks on her icon at the top, uh, her avatar will be there. And you can see that Dylan and um, um, Mace, Mimi, Mimi is there. Yes. That's right. So she can choose her avatar if she wishes. But uh, she wants to edit her avatar at the moment. Choose a guy, pardon me. She mm. can change her skin tone. She can become taller or shorter. Uh, she can change from girl to boy. She can change her hair, her mm -hmm. clothes, and all the accessories. So let's just change something for Irati. Okay. Um, like, for example, buying this T-shirt? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. But she's got plenty of just, points. Yes. Uh -huh. So I have now a new T-shirt, and that's it. I can buy the items I want from here. Yes. That's really nice. Okay, and that's done. I'm going to give her a mochila, that's great. Yes. <laughs> it looks like. Yeah. Right, okay. this is really nice. Okay. So, the important point about changing and personalizing avatars, and particularly for young children, is that they can identify, as they have more control mm -hmm. over their avatar, they can identify with their avatar, and create that emotional connection between their English language learning inside the pupils app, and the personality that they are creating yeah. that's going around the learning journey. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. Everything was quite clear to me, mm -hmm. but now that we have almost finished, I think it's time to um, have some questions, because maybe you might have some, of some questions regarding the features that we have just explained. So uh, I think now you have a chat box in your window that you can type in your questions, and Margie and I will try to answer them. Okay, so let's, let's see have a look and see if some uh, the there's something coming. Yeah. Okay. Audience. Yeah. Let's see if there are any questions coming through. I really like the pupils app. I think uh, children really like the like it and playing with their avatar, like if it is a video game that they can use also at home. Yeah. It's really nice for them. I, I agree with that, and I think well maybe um, you may the very very small children. It's a resource to use in the classroom, but with mm -hmm. the slightly older children, the five year olds. So certainly, my my niece is five year old. She can certainly manage yes. that. I mean, obviously, there would be parental control if she's doing it at home. Yeah. Yeah, um, and a really good feature of Tap and Teach for the teacher is that you can go in as a teacher into the pupils app as well, mm -hmm. and you can do those activities in the classroom if you wish with all the answers there. Too. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so we already have some questions. How can my students change the clothes? Right. We have just seen it. Uh, you can just um, uh, access your the student profile, and they will be able by clicking in this button in the Edit Your Avatar button. They will be able to choose. 
among the different um, items items that they have available in the store, if you want to say that. Mm. But remind that they just need points so that they can buy these items. It says here, do you use only one account, f uh, e one email account for all classes? Uh, yes? You can also do that. You can also, uh, for example, use your teacher's email and just put your email account for all your classes. That's okay. Yeah. Just remember, for example, that if your students need to recover their password during the weekend, for example, the recovery link will go to your email account. So okay. that's just something to take into account. I did not really get the last part you explained. Uh, it can be controlled from a Navio account. I don't uh, it, it was probably the um, the teachers app that you can go into the as a teacher. You go into the um, dashboard. You can actually go in to the pupils app, logged in as a teacher as well. Mm -hmm. I hope that's the section you're referring to. If not, oh, please yeah. type in another question. Uh, there was a, a question right there. I cannot see it because there are a lot of the questions coming in. But someone was asking about uh, Avalar, if there is any uh, version available for Avalar computers. This is from Galicia. Yeah. And there is a Linux version for you. And, but if you need any assistance, uh, I was going to mention this uh, later. Uh, before we finish, but we have a team of technicians that are available for you if you need them to go and set it up for you. How can I, as a teacher, see all the points my students get? get? Ah, you can. Yes. You can see it. Yes, that. you can see it. In fact, if you go to and view the webinar which we, Susanna and I gave on the 10th of April, you will see that we explain. Uh, in some detail, the progress tracker, mm -hmm. um, and you may want to watch the follow-up um, web webinar this evening, yes. where we do go into detail on the progress tracker. Right. Um, but it's from the progress tracker that you would be able to monitor your pupils if you register your pupils. Exactly, beforehand. you need to register your pupils. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, another question here. I understand that children can play with the app at home. That's great. Yes. Can we indicate which activities uh, they must do? Uh, yes, because uh, you as a teacher, you also have access to the pupils app, so you can select the activities or identify the activities that you, they, you want them to do at home. And also, remind uh, when Margie explained the, um, the pupils app and the reward lessons, and we saw that we can see the activities that in the tap and teach, yeah. sorry, in, in the tap and teach, teach, using the filter view, mm. you can see the activities that are coming from the pupils app. That's right. So you can identify there the activities that you want your pupils to do at home. So in the classroom, you can actually show your pupils what they look like, and you can explain it to them as well. Um, yeah. Can my students use Navio if I haven't added them to a class or if they don't join a class? Yes, um, they can use Navio uh, mm -hmm. if they've registered. They must register themselves, or the parents, mm -hmm. more, more uh, accurately. The parents would register them, and they can use Navio, but they don't have to join a class. Exactly. Yeah, they just need a username and a password, That's and then right. they can uh, log in in Navio. The first time they access, uh, they will be asked to join a class, but they can cancel, and they can start navigating through Navio and doing all the activities and everything. Okay. okay? Right, I think uh, we need we to... We have covered mostly everything, I think. If there's something missing, you can contact us later. Yes. Um, just to go back uh, and remind you of where you can get more help with Navio. Exclusive to Macmillan users in Advantage, we have a range of materials and resources um, specifically for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Uh, we have the user manuals, which are written in English and Spanish, mm -hmm. and quick guides to get you started on using Navio Now, uh, which are written in Spanish. There are over 13 video tutorials explaining different stages and features of Navio for you to be able to view. Uh, we will also include this webinar this evening, and um, that will be uh, put into advantage very shortly. But there's also the webinar from the 10th of April, which is available yes. there too. There's a white paper on gamification. If anybody is interested in reading about the principles of gamification which has been applied to Navio, and we will have in there a letter. Tomorrow morning I will be posting an advantage, a letter which you can use, download, print, and send to parents with the login details that you've created for each of the pupils um, mm -hmm. should you want to register your pupils as, as Susanna showed. Finally, we have a series of videos which are called Introducing Big Wheel Videos where you can find a lot more information.
Yes, that's a lot of very useful resources. And I uh, would also like to remind you that we have a customer care department and a group of technicians that are available for you if you need them. Uh, you can just reach them at uh, Atención Cliente at MacmillanEducation.com. It is written in this uh, slide right now. Okay. Well, uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for attending yeah. this session. We hope it's been helpful for uh, new users and a useful reminder for current users, for existing users. Um, we would we'd be grateful if you would complete the questionnaire uh, when you leave, before leaving this session. Thank you and goodbye. Many thanks for attending. Thank you. Bye.